Hello friends, in today's session, I will be talking about the basic steps that are required for proximal femur nailing in intertrochanteric fractures that can be performed in few minutes and in a correct manner. So these are the basic simplified steps that need to be taken care of during the proximal femur nailing of intertrochanteric fractures. The first thing you have to go for provisional reductions that might not be perfect. Then you have to do some simple maneuvers through your entry incision. And then you have to decide the correct entry point. Then you have to decide the correct direction of the reaming for creating a track for the prominent proximal part of the proximal femur nail. Then you have to decide whether you need to use an owl or a proximal reamer. Then the important thing about the length, what should be the appropriate length of the nail? Then you have to insert the nail gently and what are the precautions that need to be taken care while inserting the nail and whether you need to go for a static or dynamic locking. So these are the simple steps. If you perform these steps properly, then you are definitely going to get a gold reduction in intertrochanteric fractures. So the first step. The first step is provision reduction. Conventionally, we use fracture table to reduce the fracture and you all must be aware of the reduction maneuvers that are required for putting limb on the fracture table. Commonly used is the traction while looking for the matching cortices whenever feasible. So for example, you see this is a comminuted trochanteric fracture in which the greater trochanteric fragment, the lesser trochanteric fragment and the lateral wall all are fractured. So what we had done, we had tried to provisionally reduce it with traction. So what we have got, we have got some good length or you can say there is slight destruction in the fracture side. But you see there is still negative reduction. That means the medial cortex of the proximal fragment is lying lateral to the medial cortex of the distal fragment. That means there is negative reduction. It is very important. Why? Because negative reduction is the risk factor for varus collapse later on. What else you see? You see the lateral wall is broken and the GT fragment is separate one and there is combination in the trochanteric tip area also. Definitely this case is not for dynamic hip screw because the lateral wall is deficient. And in the latter view you see the proximal fragment, this part is anterior, this part is posterior and the proximal fragment is tilted anteriorly that means it is in flexion in the lateral view. And in the fracture it appears to be a simpler one but here the fracture line is exiting near the tip of the gritometer. And in reduction again there is negative reduction here that means still in slight varus. And in lateral view you see there is good amount of flexion here. The anterior cortex of the proximal fragment is tilted anteriorly that means it is in quite flexion so we need to take care about these things in our later steps you need not to be accurate during the proximal reduction other things need to be done in later steps when you are putting the patient on fracture table so this is the kind of axial alignment we are getting so see if you are getting an opening here what you can do to cover this opening you can actually bring the distal fragment proximally that means bring the distal fragment in flexion or you can lift the terminal part of the flexure table that will help in flexion of this fragment you may get a better reduction by doing that maneuver but if still not helping what you can do you can actually palpate the trochanteric area through the entry incision and bluntly creating a track using an artery forceps just anterior to this bone you can pass a bone lever along this bone and when you lift the bone lever here you are actually reducing this flexed fragment but the problem occurs when you have put your entry incision just proximal to the greater trochanter. What will happen? Because of the pulling of this bone lever, your incision will now come more anteriorly and you will face difficulty in putting the nail. Well, suppose your incision comes here because of pulling of this bone lever. You will face the difficulty in putting the nail. The direction of nail is like this, but your entry incision has come here. So it's always better to keep your incision more posterior to the trochanteric area. You can say one or two finger width posterior to the axial line that is passing through the trochanteric tip. This is the axial line of the trochanteric area and your incision should be around two finger width posterior to it. So that when you are lifting the bone lever, you are not migrating your incision much anterior. That will make the nail entry difficult. So for example, if you see here, the initial incision was put in line with the trochanteric area, but when the surgeon felt difficulty in putting the nail, he had to extend the incision posteriorly. Here it is posterior to the trochanteric area. You can see this is the prominence of the greater trochanter. The incision is quite posterior to it. So that was helpful. Another example, the same case that I've shown you earlier. There is good amount of flexion here, but by just putting the bone lever anterior to the proximal fragment and along the bone, we have reduced it perfectly in line with the distal fragment. Now coming to the entry point. So where as well as in intertrochanteric fractures can be corrected by traction. If you are not able to do it, then leave everything on your entry point and direction of proximal reaming. So there can be multiple types of fractures. So there can be excessively comminuted fractures, I've shown you earlier, or there can be a simple fracture with various alignment and there can be a fracture in which the fracture line is below the 
locantic area. That means it is not exiting here, it is exiting somewhere downwards here. That means this part is still intact. So for NG part, you need to be aware of these critical points. If your reduction is in varus, definitely you have to go for a medial entry point. Medial entry means you have to make an entry that is just medial to the trochanteric tip. That means somewhere here, not here. It has to be somewhere here. You need not to go deep into the piriformis fossa like here. You just need to go just medial to the trochanteric tip. This whole bone will not allow compression at the fracture site and the fracture has, will have tendency to go in varus. So in any fracture which is having fracture line close to the trochanteric tip, you have to go for medial entry. That means somewhere here, just medial to the trochanteric tip, not here, somewhere here, right? And if you are having good reduction with enough bone near the trochanteric area, then you can definitely go for conventional GD tip entry. For example, here you see the fracture line is below the trochanteric area. This part is still intact. Then you can definitely go for trochanteric tip entry, but be cautious, your reduction has to be in valgus when you are going for this kind of entry in subtrochanteric fractures. If your reduction is in varus, then definitely go for medial entry. And another important thing, whenever there is combination near the trochanteric, it is very difficult to go through a medial entry. You have to use an owl that can be put on this medial bone and you can just hammer the owl so that the bone just medial to the trochanteric tip is removed. Why? Because otherwise if your entry becomes somewhere here and you are trying to get compression at fracture site, this bone will not allow the compression. We will be seeing this thing in coming examples. So this was the thing I was telling that because of this extensive combination, your guide wire will have tendency to go into the combinated zone only. Then you have to use an owl that can be placed just medial to this trochanteric tip area and then you pass the guide wire after that. You use the cannulated owl as the directing device for putting a medial guide wire. You can just rotate the owl to remove this bone. I've told you whenever there is reduction in varus and combination then always definitely have to go for a medial entry. Now you see this fracture is also a combinated one and you will see that your guide wire is now going more laterally. You might get afraid that you have created an entry which is medial but why guide wire has gone laterally because of the combination if you push the guide wire with your finger medially then you will be able to see the actual tag that you have created the critical part is to create a good entry point there should not be any issue even if your guide wire is migrating laterally because of the combination this bone has to be removed whenever reduction is unstable or it has tendency to go in varus here also we have created an entry just medial to the trochanteric tip we are not going deep in the piriformis fossa, we are just medial to the tip of the trochanteric area. You see this fracture line is exiting here. So if we are creating a track here, then definitely we are going to merge with the fracture and this whole block will not allow compression at the fracture site and fracture will have tendency to go in varus. In this example also, we have gone for medial entry wire because of the varus reduction and medial entry will definitely help in getting the reduction better. We'll see in coming examples. Now once you have created the entry, then you have to decide about the direction of proximal reaming. So the simplest manner in which you can decide the direction of proximal reaming is to imagine or just transpose the nail over the proximal fragment. Forget about the distal fragment. Just think about the proximal fragment and see what kind of alignment of the proximal fragment you want with the nail. So for example in this case, now we have transposed the nail over the proximal fragment. Then you have to see the alignment of the proximal fragment with the nail. It should be in appropriate pelvis. This lower part of the nail now represents the femur shaft and this proximal fragment represents the actual proximal fragment. So, so you have to restore the relationship between the distal part of the nail and the proximal fragment. So if you put the nail in this trajectory, then definitely you are getting a good reduction. Your screw will be going somewhere here. That means in inferior quadrant, your overall alignment is in valgus. That is good. So this kind of proximal reaming direction is required for this structure. So our entry point was medial. So we are correct. Now direction has to be like this. Then only you will be able to restore the alignment with the distal part of the fracture. Because the distal part is nothing but the canal of the femur. And this shaft part of the nail will actually take the alignment of the distal fragment. In this case, we had transposed the nail over the proximal fragment. So this was the alignment we were aiming for. And then after creating a reaming track with like this, we were able to restore the good alignment of nailing. Why? Because this distal part of the fracture had taken the shape of the nail and in proximal part we had created this track. This yellow shaded part is the area we need to ream proximally so that the track is created to align the proximal fragment with the nail. Then automatically once the nail is inserted, the track of the distal part and the proximal part will match each other. And be cautious, whenever you are doing the proximal reaming, 
always check for the lateral view while doing the rimming because there will be tendency of proximal fragment to deviate from the reduction when doing proximal rimming. So always check both AP and lateral views whenever you are doing proximal rimming. Most commonly there is tendency of this proximal fragment to remain in flexion while proximal rimming is done. So always be cautious that the flexion is connected before proximal rimming is done. Here you see we had done the proximal rimming in the desired track. We had planned for this kind of track and then we had done the proximal reaming in this particular direction only. This reaming track will actually prepare the area for nail insertion and the nail will now align in this direction only. Now you see we have got a good alignment. Another example here you see the proximal fragment is very unstable. It is migrating medially laterally wherever we want. So what we had done we had using an awl we had removed this medial bone and then inserted the awl in the direction in which we want the nail to get aligned with the proximal fragment. We want the nail to be aligned with proximal fragment like this. So we have to try for this kind of direction. But it is very difficult to ream in this direction with the proximal reamer because of the extensive combination here and unstable nature of the fracture. So what we had done, we had used the owl to create a track. So you see, this part is actually communicated. So the owl can move in any direction because of this combination but you have to remove this bone and you have to create this track even if owl is migrating laterally but we were facing real difficulty because of the combination the, because of the combination the owl was migrating laterally and it was very difficult to control the owl because of the combination so what we had done since this was the desired track we wanted we had actually removed the medial bone as we had seen in earlier diagrams then inserted the owl so the critical part is to remove this bone otherwise this will hinder in your reduction now once we had inserted the nail, you see nail has also migrated laterally. But you see the bone we have removed here is quite visible. This removed bone will actually have carrying compression at the fracture site as we will see in the coming slide. So you see this part is still distracted but you see the bone we have removed here. You see we are getting compression at the fracture site both here and here despite of our nail getting lateral. Because we had removed this medial bone that will allow the nail to go inside this area and print compression at the fracture side. Then coming whether to use Owl versus Reamer for proximal reaming. So you see Owl is a smaller device compared to the proximal reamer and it has a curvature which has an apex medially. So whenever we are trying for a medial entry point then it is very difficult to pass the reamer in this particular direction because of the bulk of the muscles that are going to hinder this vertical direction. Then Owl can definitely be used because of its curved shape. Whenever bone is osteoporotic then definitely you can use a smaller owl because the nail will automatically fit in a weak bone but the reamer will have tendency to damage that weak bone or whenever there is combination then the reamer will have tendency to displace the fragments more than desired. Whenever the thigh bulk is more and you are facing difficulty then a longer owl can just be aware whenever the bone is weak whenever there is combination preferably use the owl not the proximal reamer and whenever you are facing difficulty in directing the proximal reamer then the owl can be used here you see it is very difficult to direct the reamer in a vertical direction so automatically we will have tendency to break go medially from lateral to medial therefore the proximal reamer is not preferred in such scenario but because of the curved shape of the owl you can easily pass the owl through a medial entry point and in a vertical direction not in an oblique direction like this which is exiting into the fracture and and with the longer owl definitely you can go for a more vertical track. This can be helpful in subtrochanic fractures or trochanic fractures which have tendency to go into varus. So you see with proximal reamer it is very difficult to create a vertical track but with all it is very easy because of this curved part they have provided. This whole region allows the space for tissue without hindering or pain of all insertion. Now nail length. Fractures that are extending up to the lesser trochanter can definitely be managed with short nails and there is no point of getting a nail which is fitting in diaphysis. Well fitting nail can actually create a problem by creating hoop stresses around the fracture site that can displace them and secondly because of the bow you can actually face the difficulty while inserting the nail because the nail curvature might not match with the curvature of the proximal femur always slightly undersize the diameter so that the nail tip does not hit the femur bow and if you have put a very well fitting nail then you can you can actually create an iatrogenic fracture by excessive force that is applied to insert that nail so long nails should be preferred in young patients and in any fracture that is extending below the lesser trochanter then also you have to go for long nail because it is it provides biomechanically better construct but be careful whenever you are facing resistance while inserting a long nail always check for the lateral view again the same region the bow of the femur 
or the curvature of the femur might not match with the curvature of the nail. You see in this example, in AP view, you might have thought a longer nail should have been inserted. But when you check the lateral view, you see it is almost going out of the trochlea of the femur. Had a longer nail been used, this definitely would have breached this bone. So always check the lateral view whenever you are inserting the nail to avoid any hydrogenic injury in this area. And whenever and always keep the guide wire inserted whenever you are nail pushing the nail. Why? Because whenever the guide wire is positioned centrally, that will help the nail to go in this direction. But you have removed the guide wire prematurely, you have tendency to push the nail in a wrong direction. So always keep your guide wire ready inside so that the nail is directed centrally. Then coming to static versus dynamic. For that, you just need to be aware about the basic principles of fracture healing. So whenever there is commission, you see there are large number of fragments. So if you are doing static locking in combination, then micro motion will still happen and reduction loss will also be lower. But if you are using a dynamic screw, basically, in case of community fracture, definitely the reduction loss risk will be there and the micro motion might remain appropriate because the nail is getting intramedullary fit but definitely the chance of loss of reduction will be there whenever the fracture is completed. And so we have to use static locking in combinated fractures and whenever static locking is performed in simple fracture then micro motion will be reduced but the risk of reduction loss will be lowered. So if your fracture is perfectly reduced then definitely you can go for static locking in simple fracture. So static or dynamic locking should not be a problem whenever the fracture is well reduced in AP and lateral views. So if you are doing the dynamic locking in combination definitely micro motion will be high and and that can actually result in non-union because of the excess of motion and also there will be risk of malreduction because of the collapse at the dynamic hole site then if you are doing dynamic locking in simple fracture micro motion will remain appropriate because the nail is getting fit in the canal and loss of reduction chances will also be low because the fracture is a simple one so if your fracture is perfectly reduced then definitely you can take a well-fitting nail but I've told you in earlier few slides that a well-fitting nail can actually create a problem when the short nails are used that can actually hit the bone part of the femur. In this example, you see, this is a combinated fracture. What the surgeon has done, he has reduced it appropriately in AP and lateral views. The reduction is fine, the nail placement is fine, and but the screw he has placed is a dynamic screw. So he has actually placed a dynamic screw in a combinated fracture. Now we'll see the follow-up. You see, this was the earlier reduction, but with follow-up, because of the dynamic screw, the fracture got collapsed excessively than required. So overall, the length of the limb has shortened. So preferably use the static screw in these kind of cases where there is combination at the fracture site.